डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग बिरला विश्वकर्मा महाविद्यालय इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज she is working in the field of civil engineering and environmental engineering she has completed her phd in civil engineering from sp university in 2018 her mtech dissertation was awarded with the best thesis of the year by india water box association gujarat section uh, she has 31 publications in peer reviewed journals uh, at present she is working as schedule 1 environmental auditor recognized by gujarat pollution control board We are pleased to have her as an expert of today's talk. Now, I would like to request Dr. Reshma to share her views on hydrogeochemical studies of diffuse contamination in an irrigation command areas and its effect on groundwater. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, uh, Reshma Patel, uh, associate professor in civil engineering department. Uh, today, I am presenting uh, the work as such. slightly off bit to the environmental engineers the reason is that whenever we talk about the pollution it is the uh, point source pollution uh, that is always discussed with so this is as such uh, the combination of uh, water resources engineering and uh, the environmental engineering the burning issue for the ground water pollution as such is uh, worldwide not for our country we are uh, dependent on the ground water sources for the pollution uh, uh, sorry for the water resources supply and uh, this as such uh, is the basic problem where diffuse contamination is always overlooked or rather uh, we are not ready to accept the fact that it is again one of the major source for the contamination to the groundwater resources uh, as such why this is important because groundwater source is most suitable source as a source of water supply for its widespread availability and good quality of course it is the prominent source for irrigation domestic and industrial supply not for our country but many parts of our uh, many parts of the world almost 80% of the rural domestic and 50% of the urban need is satisfied by ground water of course groundwater is less vulnerable to the contamination and pollution compared to the surface water body uh, and this is the reason why it is widely accepted source as a source of water supply worldwide essentially in the india uh, we are uh, aquifers are experiencing an increasing threat of the pollution because of urbanization industrial development agricultural activities mining enterprise and hundreds of the millions of people both in urban and rural area depend on the ground water for the domestic supply shallow aquifers especially unconfined aquifers are much more susceptible to be contaminated from the surface acti um, activities compared to the deep confined aquifers so presence of the ground uh, contaminants in the ground water has led to increased pressure on the resource managers and environmental planners to identify the susceptible groundwater system and uh, monitor the extent of contamination develop cost effective tools for assessing the likelihood of contaminant migration through the soil and enter the groundwater system develop and implement uh, the management programs see various uses like domestic industrial and irrigation groundwater chemistry play very important role in an region groundwater quality depends on geochemical composition of underlying rock strata quality of the recharged water soil and water interaction processes soil and gaseous phase interaction rocks present in the unsaturated zone and their interaction with recharge water residence time in aquifer and processes which are taking place in the aquifer itself 
So these are the various uh, parameters which affects the groundwater quality. As such, uh, the uh, geology of the area plays very important role as far as the natural quality of the groundwater is concerned. And uh, see, this is the reason why some of the places specific contaminants found are very high. Say, for example, nine states in our country, we are facing high fluoride concentration as well. Four states in our country, we are having high arsenic problem. Second is the residence time in the aquifer. Usually, the dissolved solid concentration in the deeper aquifers are found more compared to the long residence time. And uh, the processes, uh, the time for processes, of course, is available. Diffuse contamination of the groundwater occurs because of the agricultural activity, not in India. Worldwide, it is largest source of the diffuse contamination for the subsurface sources, especially groundwater, and that to the unconfined aquifers. Second, it is urban and industrial runoff, erosion due to construction activities, application of the fertilizers and pesticides for the golf course, lone roadways, parks and road salt runoff. Of course, this is not uh, the major issue for our country, but uh, in the developed countries as well as in the cold region, the use of the salt just to uh, de-ice the road is very common. And this is again one of the major source for the groundwater contamination, atmospheric deposits, livestock waste. See, this is again not much discussed source of the contamination to the aquifers. But in India, where we have largest number of the livestock in the world, this is again, and see, especially in the rural area, uh, the cow dung and other waste as such are um, dumped in the open pits and uh, by variety of the reason actually subsurface sources are uh, contaminated especially shallow aquifers and hydrogeologic modifications whenever it occurs actually is the another source for the groundwater contamination why shall we worry for this diffuse contamination the reason is that non-point source pollution it is more difficult to tackle compared to point source pollution related to the monitoring as well as the enforcement of mitigating controls because of the heterogeneity of the soil and water system at a large scale. Basically, it is our assumptions that aquifers of are of infinite extent. Secondly, uh, see when it is a diffuse contamination or non-point source contamination. It is very difficult to estimate the extent of the pollution from where it will occur and the what is the area which is uh, affecting the pollution of the aquifers. Especially the non-point source pollution uh, pollutants are not easily traceable. Say it is just like the leakages in our slab where the uh, tipping of water will be at one place, source may be at the other place. So we cannot, uh, just like point source, it is extremely difficult to trace the exit uh, point from where the pollutants are leaching to the subsurface sources. The non-point uh, source contaminants enter the environment over very large area and irregular time frame. They are associated to certain existing geographic or geomorphologic conditions and uncontrollable uh, meteorological events. They have potential for long residence time on the global eco ecosystem and it may result in long term chronic effects on the human health and soil aquatic degradation. Uh, radical changes in the farming practices which have aimed at uh, increasing productivity and reducing the reliance on imported food. 
um, especially in the developed countries where population is very large, cultivable land area available is not adequate compared uh, to the number of uh, people who are living there actually uh, have forced them to go for the modern agricultural practices uh, where there is introduction of the large scale agricultural monocultures, extensive use of agrochemicals and irrigation, especially in Asia and Latin America. So concern over the agricultural diffuse contamination pollution sources in integrated water quality management has been growing uh, recently. Of course, uh, many area in our uh, country also uh, have uh, are facing these problems. Groundwater sources are even more critical in developing countries like India, where agricultural and rural habitats are still dominant compared to other developed countries. Major issues of concern in India are extremely varying uh, rainfall and stream flow patterns and traditional agricultural practices. The main reasons for neglecting groundwater pollution includes because it is not visible source. Aquifer response to pollution usually is not immediate. It is a very slow process compared to the uh, sub surface uh, pollution and deterioration of the groundwater quality was not identified because of the lack of groundwater quality monitoring uh, facilities. Of course, uh, it is not an issue now, but some before some years back, it was not so easy or it was costlier affair. That's why this part was totally neglected. So protection of as such groundwater resource is of great importance because once the pollution of the groundwater occurs, the scale and persistence of such pollution makes restoration technically difficult and costly. Majority of the cases, it is uh, uh, observed that it is next to impossible to uh, restore the ground uh, groundwater or the aquifer present in a particular area. So agriculture as such holds very important position in our economy which is resulting in rising stress on the natural resources in the country. Uh, major issues associated with the agriculture are degradation of the soils from overuse of chemical fertilizers, nutrient deficiencies, use of pesticides causing health hazard, decline in crop di uh, di diversity, over exploitation and deterioration of the groundwater quality, uh, water logging and salinity. These two are the burning issue, probably not in our state, but uh, entire country where intense agricultural activity is still observed. The hydrogeochemistry, of course, uh, it is a very important uh, branch or the study as far as the groundwater quality is concerned. So geochemical properties of the groundwater usually depends on the recharge water and on subsurface geochemical processes. So the control of the water quality during the course of its underground movement by raising or lowering the amount and kind of dissolved solids, the scale of the change in the quality of groundwater depends on chemical and physical properties of the surrounding rocks degree of diagenesis in the sediments, water temperature, salinity of water and its other chemical content, volume of water movement and its velocity and human influence. Obviously, uh, water we can consider as a universal solvent. More than 95% of the chemicals gets dissolved in the water and this plays very important role uh, as far as the chemistry of the groundwater is concerned. Uh, diagenesis process as such adds to or leaves the uh, chemicals from the sediments. Water temperature, majority of the uh, reactions are temperature dependent. Definitely change in the temperature uh, 
affects the solubility of the chemicals and it changes the water quality salinity of the water both in this contest it is the coastal salinity as well as ingress salinity changes the chemical content in the uh, groundwater quality especially in the intense agricultural area volume of the water movement and its velocity naturally slower is the velocity more will be the solubility of the chemicals and human influence it is uh, the major source of the pollution to the groundwater in any area as such groundwater has unique chemistry because of the different processes which are constantly going on that is a soil soil and rock water interaction during the recharge and groundwater flow prolonged storage in the aquifer precipitation public dissolution of the mineral species gas exolution and dissolution exchange adsorption and desorption so these uh, these are the major uh, processes which affects the groundwater quality as such at a time or in a particular aquifer system always more than one processes are going on and it changes the groundwater quality over a period of time see as far as groundwater classification is concerned groundwater classification um, as such it is a hydrochemical physics which is a function of interaction of rock water solution kinetics geology and sources of contamination which is used to express the water quantities that differs in the chemical composition major ion composition of the groundwater as such is used to classify the groundwater into the various uh, types based on the dominant cations and anions and overall characterization of course of the hydrogeochemical uh, data is possible by knowing the hydrochemical physics uh, for the water type so there are various uh, ways to express the type of the ground water uh, piper trilinear diagrams are extensively used to classify the ground waters based on their major ion chemistry see the ground water chemistry as such depends on the number of factors uh, like general geology degree of chemical weathering of the various rock types quality of the recharge water and input from the sources other than water uh, rock water interaction it is the resultant of all the processes and react reactions which are acting on the water from the moment uh, to it, it is condensed in the atmosphere to the time of the discharge by a well so it, in the hydrological cycle uh, when it reaches to the atmosphere again it precipitates it is uh, recharge and that aquifers when they are tapped through the wells the quality is reflected so it varies uh, from place to place it varies from depth of water table from season to season and it is primarily governed by the extent and composition of the dissolved solids which are present in it definitely uh, spatial variation of the water quality is observed uh, for more than uh, one reason and obviously at different places water quality available is different depth of water table as such plays very important role as far as uh, the water quality is concerned shallow aquifers are more vulnerable to the contamination compared to the deep aquifers even if there is no contamination solid content in this shallow aquifer is comparatively less to the water which is tapped from the deep aquifers because of more close contact with the surrounding rocks uh, lower de uh, higher detention time uh, and other factors season to season also there will be change in the water quality in the same aquifer systems uh, especially when we monitor the uh, water quality before monsoon and after monsoon lot of recharge will be there uh, during the monsoon period and definitely uh, 
the there will be dilution of uh, the contaminants or the constituents in the water compared to the pre monsoon season of course uh, the extent and composition of the dissolved solids which are present in the ground water defines its quality so dissolved constituent of course uh, variety of the constituents are present in the ground water because of the interaction with the atmosphere the superficial environment soil and bedrocks which are present ground water usually have much higher concentration of most of the constituents compared to the surface water deep ground water even have higher concentration compared to the shallow or the young waters because of the long contact time with the rock and uh, long detention is possible and dissolved constituents actually they are divided in the uh, major components predominant cations as well as anions and trace elements especially the groundwater classification is based on the predominant uh, cations and anions major components major components uh, of the groundwater includes the major anions are bicarbonates chlorides and sulfate and major cations usually observed in high concentration are sodium calcium magnesium and potassium so these constituents usually are typically present in the concentration in the range of few milligrams per liter to several hundred milligrams per liter in the saline water in the fresh water surface water it will be in few milligrams per liter in saline water it is uh, several hundred milligrams per liter trace elements like silicon chloride iron manganese chromium arsenic aluminum strontium barium all these uh, are present in a fraction of this uh, of course some of them may be absent also in the groundwater the major groundwater geo if we talk about the major groundwater geochemical processes so water which is moving through the ground as such will react to the varying degree with the surrounding minerals and this rock water interaction gives its characteristics chemistry silicate mineral that comprises most rock do not react readily with the most ground waters carbonate minerals actually react quite readily with the water and they play an important role in the evolution of many ground waters especially crust environment is of important because these type of the aquifers in many places are major source of water supply in many parts of the world various uh, geochemical processes which uh, ground water uh, which occurs in the ground water are dissolution hydrolysis and precipitation adsorption and ion exchange oxidation and reduction gas exchange between ground water and atmosphere biological factors uh, biological processes and man made factors affects the ground water quality or the chemistry and uh, of course whenever we study about the ground water chemistry we should consider all these factors into account the dissolution hydrolysis and precipitation uh, the first characteristics actually very important also because whatever dissolved constituents which are present in the ground water are because of dissolution of the various uh, constituents from the surrounding or bedrocks so this as such contact between the water and the adjoining rock causes rock component to go into the solution as well as precipitation of the material from the ground water into rock cavities as such this particular depends on uh, the saturation index so if it is 
saturation index is less than 1 in it indicates that there is a scope for dissolution if it is oversaturated definitely the minerals or the constituents are precipitated into the rock cavities of course rock forming material become dissolved by chemical weathering dissolution and chemical weathering as such are chiefly controlled by pH and redox potential. Uh, dissolved solid concentration increases in the increase in the contact surface, contact time and temperature because majority of the reactions, they are dependent on the time and temperature. Breaking of the minerals under influence of hydroxide ion and OH ion is hydrolysis. Definitely uh, the best example observed in the groundwater chemistry is the breakdown of silicate mineral feldspar. Second process which affects the groundwater chemistry is the adsorption and ion exchange. At search, adsorption, as we know, is the physical phenomena. It is the attachment of the dissolved solids to the surface of adsorbents, uh, where the adsorption refers to penetration of the dissolved solids into the structure of an adsorbent. Clay have adsorption capacity relatively independent of the pH. On the other hand, hydroxides and soil organic matter have adsorption capacity, which is highly dependent on pH. Usually, uh, clay, clay layers forms impermeable um, strata on the aquifers. And definitely, when we have the clay, which is present on the upper layers, majority of the pollutants are adsorbed into this and groundwater usually found is free from the contaminants. The ion exchange as such comprises the replacement of one species which is adsorbed on the solid surface by another one present initially in the solution. Cation exchange is much more important than anion one especially in the uh, chemistry whether there will water will be hard or it will be the soft water uh, the exchange of the calcium ion with the sodium uh, that makes the water chemistry predominant in the area as far as ion exchange is concerned the ions with higher charge are preferentially adsorbed but ion exchange also depends on the concentration in the solution. Um, if, it, if we look at calcium has higher affinity for adsorption than sodium having the higher charges when dissolved concentration are comparable. But in the saline water, it is uh, just reverse which is absorbed. Na is more uh, absorbed compared to calcium uh, because of the sodium high sodium ion concentration. So almost common ion effect is observed in the saline water. Adsorption affinity as such decreases in the sequence. So highest is with the high uh, valence uh, constituent that is aluminum, then calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, etc. Next reaction, it is redox reaction or oxidation and reduction reaction. They are uh, important processes which together with hydrogen ion activity, that is uh, with pH, it determines the solubility of many substances. So occurrence of the substance in the groundwater is dependent on the redox reactions. Uh, there are various, if it, if it take the cross section of the aquifers, there are various zones. So the zone above the water table, usually it is Weddell's zone. It is essentially oxidizing zone. Uh, the reducing power of the system increases with uh, decreasing uh, redox potential. See, when lot of accumulation of the reducing agent or the organic matter accumulates uh, in the widow zone or zone above the water table, as uh, uh, then uh, the availability of the oxygen over a period of time when oxygen is consumed, anaerob uh, the in absence of oxygen, the anaerobic process starts, which is uh, uh, 
resulting in the reducing power of the system. So redox potential um, generally falls with the rising temperature and pH. Another reason is that biological activity also increases with the temperature and pH, uh, which leads to the higher consumption of the oxygen and the redox reaction, especially reduction of the uh, compound starts in this case. Uh, biological processes are another uh, one which changes or it affects the groundwater quality uh, directly or indirectly. So the major factors which affects uh, uh, are microbial metabolism, uh, rate and the type of the microbes of course plays very important role for changing the chemistry. Second is uh, sulfur and sulfur compounds. Uh, nitrogen compounds, iron and manganese, organic substances and uh, the higher plants on the present on the surface as such that is on the ground plays very important role on the groundwater quality. So this again is a predominant uh, factor affecting the groundwater quality because major man-made activities or the diffuse contamination when plants are present they uptake the nutrients even they absorbs the uh, pollutants also and quality is protected along with uh, the increase in the rainfall it also helps us in reducing the pollution uh, another factor which alters the groundwater chemistry they are man-made factors both directly and indirectly human activity affects greatly its chemistry so direct effects as such are caused by natural and synthetic substances which enters the groundwater as a result of human activities indirect effects leading to the groundwater quality are caused by human interference with the hydrological physical chemical and biological processes without any addition of the substances uh, say for example diffuse contamination um, as such directly we are not adding any substance to the system but our activity indirectly affects the groundwater quality to great extent and there are evidences not in india but worldwide uh, the groundwater contamination because of this diffuse pollution is a real headache. Various sources of the pollution by man-made activities are pollution by gases, pollution by liquids, pollution by solids, uh, effect of sewage and wastewater, discharge to surface runoff, infiltration from a septic tank and drains, irrigation and spray systems, disposal of the sewage, and consequences of the solid waste disposal. Uh, another major source of the contamination of the groundwater because of improper collection and management of the sewages. See, uh, the case study of uh, Mahi Right Bank Command area where this study was carried out, hydrogeochemical geo studies was carried out. I'm going to present this. It is very interesting. Mahi Right Bank Command area as such is uh, the uh, irrigation dominant area see it is uh, mahi right bank command canal uh, right, mahi right bank canal as such is uh, the major irrigation project in the central gujarat which supplies the water from vanakpuri weir located on river mahi near vanakpuri it is uh, having the latitude and longitude around 22 degree uh, north and 72 degree east main canal length is around 73.6 kilometer branch canal uh, it has six branch canal nadiyad petlad bursat kambe limbasi and uh, mathar branch uh, cultivable command area is 2 lakhs 12 hectares it is this area as such is bounded by Mahi River on east side, Shady River on the north side, 
Vatrak and Sabarmati River on the west and Gulf of Kembe on the south side. Uh, this area is semi-arid with four distinct seasons. Average rainfall is around 823 millimeter with large variability or there is a large spatial variation, spatial and temporal variation in the rainfall. Land is almost flat and monotonous topography with gentle slope from northeast to southwest where uh, this Gulf of Cambay is there. And there are a large number of the uh, artificial drainage around 1600 kilometers. See, uh, this is the Mahi Right Bank Command area located in the central Gujarat, covering entire Anand district and uh, Nadiat Taluka of the Kheda district. As such, study area, the aquifer system is alluvium, which is related to the sediment brought by the river Mahi, Shedi, Vatrak and Sabarmati, which consist of the silt, clay, sand and pebbles in the various proportion. Aquifer thickness varies from 30 to 150 meter. Sediments are unconsolidated uh, and light gray to yellowish in the shade. They are fairly large in quantities uh, and of course large uh, groundwater quantity is available through the wells and tube wells in the alluvial zone. Soil as such varies in upper reaches from clay soils. In the tail lower reach, it is uh, sandy in upper reach and clay in the tail reaches uh, with relatively high salinity. Uh, this salinity as such near coastal region, it is uh, the coastal salinity, but uh, in, the, in the irrigated uh, area, of course, it is turning to saline because of the ingress salinity. Mahi Right Bank Command Area, it is primarily agriculture area with a few major industries. A cropping pattern in kharif, uh, kharif crops, uh, paddy, bajra, pulses and vegetables are the main crops. In Ravi season, it is wheat and tobacco, pulses, groundnut and vegetables. And hot weather, paddy, bajra, pulses, groundnut and Vegetables are the major crops which is uh, observed here. See, if we look at the water chemistry of this region, groundwater in, in this study area are alkaline and all parameters show wide fluctuations in both the seasons. Even uh, spatial fluctuations is observed. The dominance of the cations, uh, sodium highest concentration, uh, matching with this that it is having the salinity high salinity sodium magnesium surprisingly is higher compared to calcium potassium concentration also is higher compared to calcium uh, essentially indicating the influence of the agriculture activity in the study area uh, major uh, anions observed are chloride hydro bicarbonates and sulfate so this indicates salinity and in the, within the area, not near coastal area, but within the area, high con chloride concentration indicates the ingress salinity which is present in the area. Very high concentration of the magnesium and potassium is observed. Definitely it is because of the anthropogenic activity of intense agricultural practices in the study area. Both. Uh, in post monsoon and pre uh, pre monsoon season predominant anion is chloride um, which indicates the presence of evaporites and salt water intrusion near the coastal region see if we look at the uh, hydrochemistry of the area uh, the this four especially not calcium but magnesium, sodium, and potassium are observed in very high uh, concentration in the area. Similarly, very high chloride concentration was observed and it matches with the high electrical conductivity and TDS present in the area during pre-monsoon and post-monsoon season. The correlation analysis as such was carried out for this hydrochemical physics 
and it was observed that see the method uh, it was uh, the preparation of the correlation matrix of the data from initial factor solutions which were extracted by principal common component analysis method and factor extraction was done with minimum acceptable eigen value of 1 so it was observed that there is a good correlation between sodium and calcium calcium and chloride sodium and uh, magnesium magnesium and chloride mgso4 sodium and potassium sodium chloride sodium and sulfate and chloride and sulfate in pre monsoon season so cl show very good correlation with calcium magnesium and sodium which indicates the dissolution and leaching of the secondary salts in the aquifer system for post monsoon season the observed uh, correlation was with mg uh, and cl mg and so4 sodium and potassium sodium and chloride sodium and sulfate sulfate and chloride and potassium and chloride which indicates the leaching of the salt along with the weathering process and it is uh, one of the major reason is also anthropogenic impact from the agricultural activity very high concentration of the magnesium and potassium indicates this so weathering and leaching of the secondary salts are the dominant processes in the study area uh, for both the seasons along with the anthrop anthropogenic activity the correlation matrix for open wells as such what we have discussed you can see the high correlation see correlation factor 0.5 and more are considered with the good correlation so with sodium and calcium sodium and magnesium chloride uh, similarly for the sodium and sulfate sodium with chloride sodium with potassium uh, the sulfate with the chloride all these are because of the weathering as well as the anthropogenic activities whereas in the post monsoon, monsoon season see because of the dilution uh, the concentration of the uh, constituent has reduced actually factor analysis was uh, carried out uh, for both uh, the for the constituents for both the seasons and four factors as such were identified which controls the groundwater quality uh, each of the four factors has eigen value of at least one less than that has been neglected with this study so factor loading with absolute value uh, greater than 0.5 was regarded as a significant contribution to the factor under which it displays the loading so in pre monsoon seasons four factors were found to be responsible for variation in the groundwater quality extracted with 86.4% variability whereas in pre monsoon seasons it the variability was 85.5% so different hydrogeochemical processes like weathering ion exchange and anthropogenic activities are key factors in the pre monsoon seasons which was overshadowed by leaching process loading with uh, anthropogenic info inputs in the post monsoon season because in post monsoon season the recharge activity will be is obviously very high and along with the intense agriculture activities uh, it has changed or affected the chemistry of groundwater you can see the uh, factor one which is dominated by calcium magnesium sodium chloride and sulfate factor two was identified carbonates and bicarbonates factor three uh, major parameter was ph and factor four yeah uh, it is potassium definitely it is agricultural activity which is affecting similarly for post monsoon season uh, the scenario was same but variability ph was not affecting uh, factor it was calcium uh, so indicates the ion exchange and the ph was the factor fourth factor affecting in the post monsoon season uh, the factor score as such was plotted on the surfer to study the spatial variation 
of this species uh, the factor one irrespective of the season fall in this uh, side that is northwest side which indicates the intense irrigation and water logging of the area this is actually the area uh, near Mathar and Kheda and uh, the south of the Nadiyat, where um, another uh, reason is that that topography is just like a saucer. So retention of the water, even the uh, after monsoon is higher, uh, poor drainage condition also leads to this. So, and the major crops are paddy and all this. So, or otherwise, the water applicability is also high. So, this uh, uh, area indicates very high concentration of the salts in the region. Whereas, in post-monsoon season, see, this is the variability of the scale. It is even higher, observed here. Whereas, this... Uh, east and southeast is uh, less affected with this. Factor 2 as such uh, falls in upper and lower part in the pre-monsoon season. It affects, uh, it indicates biogenic CO2 release of this after the rainfall. Microbial activity has increased. See, same scenario observed almost that is on the north side as well as on the south side. Factor 2, that is biogenic effect observed was very high. See, this region as such, there is a Gulf of Cambay. And uh, because of this, salinity as such is very high. And very specific crops as such are taken. Or it is not as fertile uh, land as the irrigation area. Factor 3 as such falls again upper and lower side in the pre-monsoon season as well as the post-monsoon season. It uh, indicates that there is a lot of solubility of the anhydrides uh, because of the agricultural activities as well as the higher recharges. Again, this is the scenario for post-monsoon season. Of course, spatial distribution of factor 4. In, in the intense agricultural area, it is very high. And uh, again, in the uh, pre-monsoon and post-monsoon season, concentration observed uh, was higher in post-monsoon because of the resolution, dissolution, concentration reduces, but it is there. So agricultural area is represented by high concentration of the presence of magnesium and potassium in this region. Many regions, magnesium hazard is also observed in later slides uh, we will discuss. Of course, hydrogeochemical studies and speciation modeling was carried out uh, to study the various mechanisms and processing which affects the groundwater for irrigation command area so quality assessment was made using pH, electrical conductivity, TDS, uh, besides the major cations, sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, and major uh, anions, chloride, sulfate, carbonates, bicarbonates, and nitrate. Nitrate data, of course, were available for 22 open wells only. The groundwater uh, classification, the Piper diagrams were plotted with uh, the concentration in terms of milli equivalent per liters uh, to illustrate the dominant species which governs the hydrochemical process and the water chemistry in an area. Dominant species found were sodium chloride. The groundwater classification, uh, it was sodium chloride indicating uh, the salinity which is present in the area, sodium bicarbonate and chloride. Calcium, sodium, car bicarbonate, and chloride, they are the major water types dominant in the study area. Compared to the alkali earth elements, that is uh, calcium and magnesium, alkali elements are higher in all water. Again, this indicates along with the presence of halides and evaporites, 
uh, the presence of salinity in the study area abundance of the alkali elements is attributed to the leaching of eoprites and silicate weathering see this is the paper diagram and we can see here see this is uh, chloride sulfate so it is uh, the sodium and potassium here the major dominant area uh, cation here it is the chloride concentration which is dominant compared to the sulfate carbonates and bicarbonate concentration is less compared to the chloride so uh, this chloride is most dominant anions which is present in the study area and this is this trend is observed almost in both the post monsoon as well as pre monsoon season you can see this the geochemical processes as such uh, gibbs diagrams were plotted to understand the hydrochemical uh, trend see this this is actually the plot of uh, sodium to sodium plus uh, calcium versus tds and it is divided in three zones similarly the chloride to chloride plus bicarbonate these are the uh, dominant anions usually present in the groundwater systems so according to the gibbs the zones divided are evaporation rock water interaction and precipitation so in pre monsoon season almost uh, the majority of the samples they fall under evaporation zone except very few in the rock water dominance zone so this indicates as such uh, the presence of sodium ion uh, along with the salt leaching very high concentration from anthropogenic activity also is observed halite dissolution and mineral weathering processes are major factors which influence uh, which influences the groundwater quality especially in the post monsoon season ion exchange of course is one of the important process which is responsible for concentration of the ions in the groundwater so the plot of calcium plus magnesium versus sulfate plus hco3 show that most of the groundwater samples fall below 1s to 1 line which indicates the reverse ion exchange say this is the graph majority of this falls under 1s to 1 line indicating the reverse ion exchange occurring in the area see this is the scenario calcium plus magnesium versus chloride ion so here this is the dominance which is observed very few as such this region very high salinity is observed and that is near gulf of cambe second uh, dominant process is carbonate weathering and dissolution so the limestone dolomite stone dolomite limestone and kankar may be the major source of the carbonates in the study area so this is the graph of calcium uh, uh, to magnesium ratio for ground water indicates significance of the dissolution of the dolomite and calcite which exist in this alluvium because majority of the sample falls for the value less than 1 which indicates the solubility of these rocks into the study area dissolution occurs when this is 1 if it is greater than 1 which indicates the greater contribution of the calcite so most of the sample were uh, the ratio was less than 1 which indicates that calcite weathering for for few samples pre and post monsoon sample have ratio near to 1 which indicates the dominance of the dolomite solution another is the silicate weathering 
silicate mineral precipitation in the chemical reaction play very important role in the geochemistry. So scatter diagram of the sodium plus calcium to the total cations of the area shows that it is nearly equal to half of this line. See, it is Na plus K is 0.5 of this total uh, cations which are, which are present in the area. So this graph as such shows that the contribution of the silicate weathering in the geochemical process uh, is mainly because of the potassium and sodium. Uh, feldspar also contributes to this. In pre-monsoon season, some of the samples uh, you can see here in pre-monsoon season, some of the samples actually were greater than three, which occurs uh, the weathering of the silicate because of the dissolution of the carbonate system which is present in the water. Next uh, observed was dissolution or precipitation of the minerals. Just to uh, study this mineral equilibrium cal uh, calculations for the groundwater as such were used for predicting the presence of reactive minerals in the groundwater system and estimating the mineral reactivity. Uh, saturation indices of calcite, dolomite, anhydrite, gypsum, argonite, carbon dioxide, fluoride, and halide were calculated. Uh, we have used uh, Frick 2.185570 uh, version or the software developed by USGS and ionic activities for above said uh, ions were calculated. So in the study area, this is the scenario for ion activity for different types of the minerals which are present. So SI value for anhydride, CO, gypsum and halite is less than one for open wells for pre-monsoon as well as for post-monsoon season, which indicates dissolution of this into the system. Whereas saturation index are more than one for argonite, calcite, and dolomite, indicating precipitation. See, majority of this, you can see here, these ions which have SI value less than one, all these will dissolve in water. Whereas, see, dolomite again is a predominant uh, dolomite and calcite, majority of these samples. Uh, the SI value is greater than 1 will precipitate. Halides definitely highly dominant as far as the dissolution is concerned. Same is the scenario, almost similar uh, scenario is observed during post monsoon season also. Saturation index for all this uh, halide, gypsum, uh, and hydrate all is less than one so this will dissolve in water or there is a constant dissolution of this in the water evaporation as such is uh, increasing uh, is results in the increase in the concentration of the constituent in the water so that is uh, actually predicted by sodium to chloride ratio if sodium to chloride is unchanged indicates evaporation if it is one indicates halide dissolution and if it is greater than one indicates the release of the sodium because of the silicate weathering so this molar ratio uh, was varying from 1.28 to 3.58 so in post monsoon season this ratio was found less than one for most of the samples uh, of course, in post-monsoon season, it was dissolution, which is replaced by silicate weathering in the pre-monsoon season at some of the locations. So trend line as such is ink light, which uh, indicates that only evaporation may not be the process for the ground uh, major process or geochemical process for groundwater chemistry. The plot of sodium versus chloride. 
show that almost pre monsoon samples blue color indicates pre monsoon this pink color as such is uh, the post monsoon sample data so it indicates uh, the excess of sodium is because of silicate weathering so the samples where the concentration is below equivalent uh, equiline is indicating the dissolution of the salt so some of the places it is precipitating some of the places it is uh, dissolving groundwater quality as such for irrigation water use was uh, as such uh, calculated the major parameters were salinity index sodium absorption ratio residual sodium carbonate permeability index magnesium hazard and usda classification you can see this uh, of course high salinity as such uh, were observed for the places almost pre monsoon season this is post monsoon season 63.3 percentage uh, samples had very high salinity which indicates water is not suitable for irrigation purpose see the graphical uh, presentation majority of the samples uh, of course salinity is very high some of the places it is because of uh, the coastal region the salt water intrusion another uh, in in interior parts it is ingress salinity and continuously it is um, actually increasing uh, 68.8% sample were found as far as sar is concerned sodium absorption ratio is concerned um, uh, for in the pre monsoon season for post monsoon season ratio has increased because of the dissolution of the salts uh, uh, by recharge scenario is improving in the post monsoon season see this is the usgs diagram both salinity and sodium hazard as such it is plotted majority of this uh, falls in c3s1 c4s1 c4s2 c4s3 indicating very high uh, salinity as well as sodium concentration in the area both for pre monsoon and post monsoon season indicates the high tds and ec present in the area chlorinity index majority of the uh, samples chlorine content was uh, higher which found to be uh, unsafe you can see this chlorine content many samples chlorine content is very high almost more than 250 mg per liter permissible well uh, very high compared to the permissible value for drinking purpose in an area see again this data are for the shallow aquifers but they are the major source for uh, <coughs> the water supply in the rural area so this is uh, uh, very important to consider only only 6.5 per 4% of the samples were suitable during the pre monsoon season of course percent sodium versus uh, the electrical conductivity graph was uh, plotted and we can see that majority of the samples fall under the unsuitable uh, to doubtful suitable condition residual sodium car carbonate was was, uh, was calculated and uh, these values actually uh, shows that th almost 36% of the sample uh, with very high rsc which is not suitable for irrigation similarly permeability index varies from 30% to 101% potential salinity is also high it is 1.3 to 134 so this indicates very high salt concentration in the area important one is the magnesium hazard only one sample falls in the suitable category that means magnesium concentration was suitable uh, 
uh, only in one sample, while rest of the sample falls under unsuitable category during post uh, pre monsoon season. Of course, post monsoon season it has slightly improved uh, because of the dilution, uh, because of the recharge. So preventive measures for protecting the soil from uh, magnesium hazard should be water management, chemical amendment for the replacement of the exchangeable sodium and a proper choice of the crops. Because of the, uh, see, rotation as such improves this, but if it is not followed properly, then uh, definitely this increases. See, one of the important aspects for uh, finding the groundwater uh, vulner uh, pollution is vulnerability assessment. Hurriedly, I will discuss the drastic model as such was uh, adopted for studying the vulnerability of the groundwater. Uh, drastic uh, represents depth to water, recharge rate, aquifer lithology, soil type, topography, impact of widow zone, and aquifer hydraulic conductivity. Uh, see, the data were collected and it was plotted. See, this is basically index and overlay method. Uh, the rate and uh, relative uh, weight uh, as such were assigned for the several parameters. The data were collected and this was indexed and overlaid in the GIS. So ILVIS uh, version 3.7 as such was uh, used for overlaying this. All these partial variation as such was uh, studied with the drastic parameters. The data were collected from uh, various agencies. Uh, map was the, um, uh, all the data as such uh, were plotted through GIS, a base map. Uh, was collected from MRBC offices. Georeferencing was done using UTM projection. The drastic overlaid uh, grid actually uh, were made of 2.5 kilometer by 2.5 kilometer boundary. And uh, study actually we have used the grid layers to compute the final drastic indices. So first graph actually uh, I'll show the uh, depth to water table in the pre-monsoon season the data were available for these area only so blue color indicates shallow depth to the uh, red color obviously is attributed to higher value this is the scenario for post-monsoon season this is the graph for net recharge calculated in pre-monsoon season this is uh, the aquifer uh, media uh, almost it is alluvium so uh, this uh, is uh, uh, having the same rating. Similarly, the soil media as such, this indicates uh, the high score for uh, sandy loam soil and low score was assigned to mark topography. It is having almost a flat topography in the area impact of widow zone since it is alluvium same rating uh, was assigned to this hydraulic conductivity as such varies from 3.9 to 8 meters per day see drastic index was carried out by this equation where this uh, r indicates rating and w indicates the weight for all seven parameters and the drastic score obtains uh, varies from 98.5 to 140.3 in the pre-monsoon season for post-monsoon season it was 100.5 to 142 so the values are again reclassified into three classes using quantile classification scheme and accordingly the low vulnerable zones have rating around 49 to 85 that is drastic values moderate 86 to 104 and highly vulnerable 105 to 150 drastic values. So the result shows that almost all. Man, uh, huh? we are running out of time. Okay, sir. Uh, this one minute. If possible, is, just conclude in one line. minute. Yeah. 
yeah sir it is last slide only so this uh, this indicates the high vulnerable zone majority of the area falls under high vulnerable zone i'll show the map see this is the final uh, graph for pre monsoon and post monsoon season uh, red zone indicates highly vulnerable area and scenario is almost similar for pre monsoon and post monsoon season so same is the case for the uh, pesticide also uh, of course these studies in, uh, indicates that the sodium uh, major is the major cation and chloride is the major uh, anion dominant in this area of course uh, high concentration of magnesium and potassium indicates uh, the intense uh, pollution because of the agricultural activities and water logging problem was observed in the uh, north west area of course overall uh, quality of the water observed is shell, uh, is very poor in the shallow area and entire area is highly vulnerable to the uh, pollution because of the uh, diffuse contamination thank you uh, thank you very much ma'am uh, there are few questions in chat box i request you to join at 9:10 again so that we can take up those questions sir if uh, possible can you have it because uh, because of some you have some other angle okay so quickly sir, i will take only one question uh, i think that has been put by uh karan is asking state of punjab has high concentration of uranium in the groundwater and yes. it is one of the reason of rise of cancer patients in punjab can you suggest yes. the reasons behind uranium in the groundwater in punjab any idea about this uh, sir uh, maybe because of the prevailing uh, geology in the state because uh, i don't think that there is any anthropogenic activity which leads to very high concentration of the uranium in punjab it definitely it may be because of the prevailing uh, geology in the state actually i have not studied the detailed geology report for the punjab state but it may be because of that okay. only okay ma'am so well, thank you very much yeah. uh, if other questions are there my mail is there in the presentation uh, we can communicate through the mail sir i am extremely sorry because i have the no, marriage no, function no need my to home, sorry so i have to leave now no leave. no problem no no thank problem ma'am uh, thank you very much and uh, i will send the rest of the question to you uh, as an email attachment okay, thank, thank you very much thank, thank you, you very sir. much so i welcome i welcome dr rajiv who has joined sorry for uh, keep you waiting for 10 minutes sir uh yeah it's fine no issue right. think, okay yeah. okay uh, ayushi are you there yes sir yeah uh, may i request ayushi to introduce uh, rajiv kumar to our participant Uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Bhattacharya is a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, India. Earlier, he has worked as uh, early, earlier he has worked at NIT Silchar and in Jorhat in Engineering College, Assam. He received his doctoral degree in Civil Engineering from IIT Kanpur, India, in the year of 2004. His current research interests include computational hydraulics, impact of climate change, surface water, groundwater interaction, assessment and management of groundwater resources, flood modeling, assessment of flood hazard and vulnerability, etc. He has more than 20 years of teaching and research experience and has authored more than 90 peer-reviewed scientific publications in various international journals and conference proceedings. He has jointly edited a couple of books, including Urban Hydrology, Watershed Management and Socio-Economic Aspects of Springer 2016, Urban Ecology, Water Quality and Climate Change of Springer 2018, Nature Inspired Method for Meta Heuristic Optimization, etc. He has implemented several research, pro research projects related to water resources management, SPI and OPI. He has also been a visiting professor at other institutes, including the Dalhousie, uh, Dalhousie University, Halifax, Canada, uh, and France. Uh, we are honored to have Dr. Bhattacharya as one of the experts of Atal FTP. Uh, he will be talking on artificial intelligence-based estimation of region, regional groundwater fluctuation using GRACE data. Uh, now, I would like to invite Dr. Rajiv to deliver his talk. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So let me share my presentation. Yeah. I hope uh, my presentation is visible. Yes, sir. Uh, make it PPT mode. Yeah. Yes, sir. It is visible and you are clearly audible. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> OK, then. Uh, so let's start. So I will be speaking mainly uh, AI means uh, I will speak basically the NN based uh, estimation of regional groundwater uh, fluctuation using GRACE data. But before that, uh, I will uh, also speak about uh, why groundwater, what is groundwater, and why we should estimate the groundwater fluctuation. And uh, and basically, as you know, that time is very odd right now because uh, I think uh, it's uh, yeah, it will be a dinner time after some time. So I will try to finish it uh, within the time given to me. OK, so but if there is any issue, please let me know. I will uh, just conclude because, uh, yeah, it's a dinner time, basically. So so my talk will be mainly uh, on groundwater. So I think uh, already uh, some people have already spoken about groundwater then but here I will just try to introduce from my angle of uh, looking at groundwater. And then what is the status of groundwater in India? So basically in the earlier lecture, so you have, uh, you have means you have mainly uh, means gone through the pollution, actually groundwater contamination part. But here, basically, I will not speak about contamination, but I will speak about the quantity. And, and basically, my idea is that how to estimate groundwater fluctuation uh, using GRACE data. So I will speak about GRACE data. Uh, and then uh, how you can use so this is one of the method actually artificial uh, neural network method so this is grnn so it's quite easy basically and you can implement it very easily so that i will discuss and finally uh, some management uh, issues okay so that that i will be discussed so within this one hour so groundwater, I think uh, I need not uh, uh, discuss this slide in details because uh, already you know, basically. So uh, this basically, suppose this is an unconfined aquifer. So here, uh, this is an impervious layer. And what is uh, what is basically stored in this particular layer, we call it unconfined. And groundwater may be also stored in confined aquifer. So and then it may be on, uh, it may be on uh, leaky confined aquifer. So here, uh, this is the this is the cycle basically. So there is a evaporation, then it will form cloud, and from cloud there will be rain, and from rain part of the rain actually it will infiltrate into the ground, and that it will store uh, or store in the aquifer. Now why groundwater? So often groundwater uh, present in those area where surface water is limited. Okay, in some areas suppose if you look at the mean suppose already i think there were some question related to punjab haryana and this part how why it is polluted okay so basically i will show you that uh, groundwater exploitation is basically happening in those areas uh, because of uh, agriculture use agriculture and industrial use and so where surface water is not available then in that case uh, this is the stable source of uh, water then quality of groundwater is generally better than surface water because uh, this is basically not polluted by uh, by basically the anthropogenic means there are some pollution issue but generally uh, generally it is uh, it is basically better than uh, your surface water then compared to river water the treatment cost of groundwater is much uh, lesser and most of the time it can be used without treatment so you know that in the village many villages they directly extract groundwater and they can they can be used it uh, the quality doesn't change much throughout the year suppose if you look at uh, surface water the quality may change the, uh, between your monsoon period and non monsoon period but here uh, quality is basically uh, not changing uh, your over time then groundwater is also uh, respond slowly to the change in rainfall suppose uh, this is a very slow response suppose if there is no rainfall in that particular area the response will be very slow so this is a relatively stable 
source and doesn't require expensive reservoir to store the water surface water actually you cannot store so or, or if you want to store it basically you need very expensive uh, reservoir system to store the water but groundwater you can store uh, very easily in the aquifer then this is the global distribution so total uh total volume of water in the art is the, this is 13.6 power 8 and out of which 8.336 uh, into 10 to power uh, 6 kilometer cube is stored in the form of groundwater and which is approximately 0.62 percent of the total water in the art okay and out of these uh, almost half of them are available in the upper 0.8 kilometer and half of them are available in the deep strata so this is basically in the figure I have shown uh, what is uh, the total distribution of uh, water. Then, uh, then in, in global perspective, groundwater makes about 95% of the unfrozen uh, fresh water reservoir of our planet. Then crown, uh, current groundwater abstraction is, is estimated uh, 1000 kilometer cube per year, which is about 67% uh, uh, and out of which 67% is uh, basically irrigation and 22% for domestic purpose and 11% for industry. Current groundwater abstraction represent approximately 26% of the total fresh water withdrawn globally and groundwater supplies almost half of all drinking water in the world and 43% and of global consumption using irrigation. So this is basically I would like I'm giving this figure just to show that how important groundwater is basically. So in, in many parts, actually, we are using uh, groundwater for irrigation, for industry and for uh, your domestic purposes. So groundwater is often uh, often a possible solution for the people without access to safe water uh, drinking. Now, if you look at the Indian context, so we have actually that estimated uh, groundwater is around 433 billion cubic meter and out of which net groundwater and is basically 399 billion cubic meter and natural discharge so this is basically naturally it is coming out of the aquifer and this is around 34 bcm and so out of that 399 so annual withdrawn is around uh, 231 that is the annual withdrawn and unused groundwater is uh, around 16, uh, 168 billion cubic meter then whatever we are withdrawing so we are withdrawing around 231 billion cubic meter per year and out of that so around 213 that means most of the water uh, we are using for irrigation and domestic use is basically very less that is 18 billion cubic meter now uh if you look at uh, the groundwater research from rainfall during monsoon so around 58 percent of the groundwater which we are getting that is basically the research uh, during monsoon period and then part of that 15 percent is research from the other sources during monsoon then research from rainfall during non-monsoon period so nine percent and research from other uh, sources during non-monsoon is 18 percent so amount of renewable water resources in india is 1869 billion cubic meter and groundwater is around 433 billion cubic meter now uh, as uh, I think you also observe uh, uh, in, in different uh, places, basically groundwater table has been depleted. So I have collected some data of Delhi. So you can see uh, this is uh, in Delhi, actually this is between 2000 and 2019. So this is the actual measurement or, or you can say this is the fluctuation data in Delhi. And you can see that in some areas, the fluctuation is negative. Uh, around 17 8, uh, 18 meter okay so this is the ground of fluctuation red is basically negative and there are some positive fluctuation also between 2000 and 2019 so so if we say ground problem so th there are two types of problem one is depleted uh, due to uh, due to over exploitation and that is happening in many parts of our country and due to change in land use land cover so there is also because of change in uh, land use land cover so groundwater table has been depleted or this is a quantity problem and and 
And so this is basically whatever I have shown that in Delhi, water table in Delhi has been depleted by 20 to 30 meters in a span of 60 years. And this is because of the over exploitation. And similar is the trend in other, uh, other major cities. Okay. So we have actually collected. So this is really alarming. We have collected some data. So I am from Guwahati. So uh, we have collected some data in Guwahati. And in Guwahati also, uh, deplete that the groundwater depletion between so this data is showing 1996 to 2015 and the depletion is 3.86 meter and if you look at the average depletion average depletion uh, per year is around 20.31 centimeter so this is really a alarming uh, situation here also uh, in Guwahati actually particularly the groundwater table is, uh, is is depleting at a rate of 20 uh, around 20 centimeter per year. So we did some study uh, in Assam. So these are some of the areas where I think you, uh, you, you means uh, you, probably you, you people are aware that Assam is very famous for its uh, tea plantation. Okay. So these are the area where tea plantation is actually tea gardens are there. And, and what they are doing basically, so they are using groundwater for irrigation purpose. And as a result, groundwater table is depleting in, in many parts of uh, Assam. Though Assam is getting the uh, a, a, a basically uh, that rainfall uh, high, means maximum rainfall also. If, if you look at uh, rainfall received in northeastern part, that is also very high. But but apart from that, also uh, this this over exploitation of groundwater table uh, groundwater. Uh, that the groundwater table is depleting in an alarming rate. So this is some parts of basically Assam where uh, we have actually tea uh, garden. Now, if you look at the Indian context, uh, so this is the depth of uh, water, uh, the depth to water level uh, in 2000, uh, pre-monsoon 2019. And, and this is basically uh, in August 2019. And this is January 2020. So here you can see that in some parts, so if you look at this part, basically the Punjab, Haryana, uh, Rajasthan, and this part, groundwater table is basically more than 40 meter. Okay, so that is uh, that is basically that groundwater table has been depleted. And you just see in many parts, the, the ground, the depth of groundwater table is uh, more than 40 meter. So we, uh, these are the data collected by uh, collected from central groundwater board. So you can see uh, this is the minimum groundwater level in 2000. So you can see that uh, this is more than 30 in some parts. And this is the minimum groundwater level in 2019. And this is the difference of between difference of minimum groundwater, uh, groundwater between 2000 and 2000. 19 and here also you can see the difference is uh, minus 40 to minus 20 in many parts and in some parts the difference is more than uh, your 40 meter so this is uh, again the same study uh, using the data collected from central groundwater board and this is showing the maximum groundwater level in 2000 and this is 2019 and you just see the difference that maximum groundwater uh, level difference fluctuation is also in some part is more than 40 meter and in many parts it is between minus 40 to minus 20 specifically the northwestern part of india and this is the average value uh, of groundwater fluctuation now if we consider if we look at uh, the depletion in groundwater in 2004 2011 i have shown here three maps basically 2004 2011 and 2017 and so if we if we basically uh, make some category of that that 70% uh, that groundwater withdrawn is more than 70% than research so it is less less than then it is safe then 70 to 90, 90 is semi critical and 90 to 100, this is critical. And over research, they will draw more than that, and this is basically over exploited. So you can see in many parts, groundwater has been over exploited. That means whatever you are researching, we are drawing more than that. So this is a study uh, actually conducted by NASA and they use the grace data so i will speak about grace data so how you can use grace data for 
uh, to study the groundwater fluctuation that that I will discuss. But this study was conducted by NASA using the GRACE data. And you can see that this study is showing that for this part, basically, again, northwestern part of India, including Punjab, Haryana, and some part of Pakistan, the study shows that estimated rate of depletion of ground table in north, uh, northwestern India is 33 centimeter per year, basically. So you can see that in this area, the groundwater has been exploited, basically. So we are withdrawing more than the research. And overall situation, if you look at, suppose in India is, is quite good, basically. Suppose if you look at north eastern part, you just see we are at the blue uh, region. So therefore, whatever actually research so, uh, we are withdrawing, less than that. But the situation here is quite critical. So this study shows that more than 26 cubic miles of groundwater disappear from aquifer in, in the areas of Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, and the nation, uh, and the capital of uh, Delhi between 2002 and 2008. So uh, this is basically the study between 2002 and 2008. And this study is showing that this groundwater has been disappeared. This uh, 26 cubic miles of groundwater has been disappeared for uh, from this area. Now, what is GRACE basically? So I will speak about uh, GRACE data. Okay, so this data, I said that this study, whatever this study, uh, this is conducted by uh, NASA itself, and they use the GRACE data for uh, this uh, fluctuation study. Now, what is GRACE basically? So it's a, it's a GRACE is a, uh, again, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's two satellites are there basically. So this is the name is basically gravity recovery and climate experiment. So this is the GRACE. And this GRACE project, under this GRACE project, there are two satellites were, were launched, basically. So you can see these two satellites. And these two satellites uh, is, uh, is separa uh, separated uh, by approximately 200 kilometers along their orbital track. So distance between uh, these two satellites is around 200 kilometers. So this satellite is something different. So I think you have also uh, learned about uh, the other uh, satellite data. Suppose we have that uh, Indian remote sensing data. Suppose IRS data is there. And then I think you have work on Landsat data and there are other remote sensing data. So they are actually what we are doing. We are using optical sensor or maybe microwave sensor in some of the suppose nowadays Sentinel data is available. So you are using microwave data or other uh, other uh, information. But here, this is something different. So it is actually not taking any, uh, it is not sensing the uh, your art surface, basically. So what it is doing, basically, there are two satellites. And it is measuring the distance between two satellites. OK, distance between two satellites. So approximately, it is 220. But what we are doing, basically, every time, so depending upon gravity, suppose if mass is increasing, gravity will change. And, and because of that, the distance between these two satellites will also sense, basically. OK, so what this satellite is doing, so it will not sensing any data. So we are measuring the distance between these two satellites. So this measurement is so sensitive that it can, uh, it can detect uh, separation changes as small as 10 micrometer, approximately one tenth of the width of a human here. So that much sensitive uh, measurement is there. So we can measure it and over a distance of 220 kilometer by measuring gravity and anomaly. So now what will happen? So it will give you that. So it will give you the gravity anomalies, basically. And this gravity anomaly, uh, anomalies, if you get, so indirectly, what you can do? What is the change in mass in that particular area you can, yeah, you can calculate? So what we are doing, basically, this satellite is giving the distance between or, or this project is giving the distance between the two satellites over that particular area. And based on that, I can actually calculate what is the mass anomaly, uh, gravity anomalies. And based on that, I can actually how gravity will sense if mass is changing, how mass is changing. If water is withdrawn from the aquifer, then what is happening? Suppose this, this part, as I said, 26 miles, uh, uh, cubic miles of water has been withdrawn. So what will happen? Mass will reduce in that particular area. And as a result, the gravity will send and you can actually calculate what is the gravity anomalies. And based on that, actually, I can calculate 
the what is the change in water or mass uh, so we call it total uh, water storage so what is change in total water storage that actually i can indirectly calculate using this satellite data so grace so what grace is giving grace is giving the grace uh, an anomaly data so reported data are anomalies related to 2004 and 2009 uh, time mean baseline and TWS is the sum of groundwater, soil moisture, surface water and snow and ice. So it's not only giving the change in groundwater, so it is giving the uh, total water storage basically. Total water storage means the groundwater is there, then soil moisture is there, then surface water is there and snow and ice. So you are getting everything. So this is basically if there is a, suppose the snow cover is also changing, then also you will get this anomaly in that particular area okay but we have to find out uh, whether this is because of groundwater sense or because of snow and other uh, uh, means uh, other changes so that actually we have to find out so this is the grace data suppose this data can be easily down uh, you can uh, download this data from the nasa website so if you are so this is for the entire art basically i have downloaded this data and this is basically showing the mass anomaly okay now i have extracted this data so this is for a particular uh, particular time period and this is basically i have uh, i have cropped the data for indian uh, indian part so basically you can see the the uh, change in uh, that uh, or anomaly data is from minus 15 to uh, 5 uh, okay so this is and 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 this is at different uh, your uh, different time basically so this is just i have shown you the data for a uh, for uh, for different period uh, of uh, in, in in the indian context so then i did a study here grace fluctuation study basically so the data is available from 2002 so i collected the data from 2002 to 2020 and then the this the just check whether the fluctuation is positive or negative basically so positive fluctuation means the total water storage uh, is basically uh, increasing and negative means it is decreasing okay now i have calculated so every year i have calculated the percentage of positive and negative fluctuation now if percentage is more than 50 percent there is low fluctuation and else it is a high fluctuation basically so here i am saying that uh, this is a positive fluctuation means low flux uh, this is a negative fluctuation means low and high fluctuation that means here most of the time basically more than 50 percent of the time blue region is telling that the the fluctuation is positive and red means fluctuation is negative so overall you can see that in most of the time the fluctuation is negative okay so that means the total water storage is decreasing so now I would like to compare this data because this grace data, what is giving the, it is a total anomaly basically. So it, it may be groundwater, it may be surface water, or uh, it may be your snow cover and other, uh, other thing. Now I would like to relate, correlate with the rainfall data. So I also collected the rainfall data from uh, your IMD website. So this is the gray, uh, gridded rainfall data over India and and this data also I have collected between 2002 to uh, 2020. So rainfall data is available for last 100 years. Data is uh, actually available. But in this study, because I want to compare with the GRACE data, so therefore I have used uh, the data between 2002 and 2020. So then mean is also calculated from uh, 2002 to 2009, uh, just to compare the data with the GRACE uh, calculation. And then I calculate the fluctuation, whether it is positive or negative fluctuation. And, and then basically, if uh, if it is uh, positive, uh, more than 50% time it's positive, then we are we are putting at uh, your high and otherwise it's a low fluctuation. So you can see uh, that in many parts, uh, there is a high fluctuation. That means your, uh, your rainfall is basically uh, positive. Uh, rainfall has a positive fluctuation. That is blue is telling and red is telling negative fluctuation now i'm comparing basically so whether suppose tws so there are four scenarios i have considered here these scenarios are the tws is decreasing d means decreasing and i means increasing 
that means the total water storage is decreasing so you can see and rainfall is increasing so these are the pixel basically union i have taken so these are the pixel over india where total uh, water storage is decreasing okay so grace data is telling that total water storage is decreasing but here rainfall is also increasing okay rainfall is increasing that means if rainfall is increasing then total water storage should have uh, should have been increasing basically but it is not like that it is decreasing so this is because of probably the over exploitation basically whatever rainfall is coming actually we are withdrawing more than that water so probably these are the uh, areas where uh, where basically we you are doing over exploitation of groundwater so here this is basically common that rainfall is also decreasing and this area water is also decreasing and here this is showing that uh, that uh, that it is increasing total uh, water storage is increasing and rainfall is decreasing and here both are increasing so this is also uh, logically correct because uh, here rainfall is increasing and storage is also increasing but if you look at here rainfall is increasing but storage is decreasing that means that means we are withdrawing more water so this is the uh, map actually if you combine all these four maps then i'm getting this particular map so if you look at now this is the this is the map actually created by uh, central ground or board and if you look at these two maps are similar so this map actually i have created uh, using the grace data and compare with the rainfall data and here this map is uh, is is basically uh, given by uh, prepared by ground uh, means with the actual data with the actual data and this is prepared by central groundwater board and you can see that this red is showing that where groundwater groundwater table is uh, decreasing and you can see that grace is also showing some similar results so there is another data source uh, ZL, uh, ZLDS. So I also did the fluctuation. So this is a actually a simulated uh, model uh, result GLDS project, and and based on that also I did the same study, uh, same same study uh, over using GLDS data. But it's showing something different result, uh, different result. So this is also the rainfall. Uh, just I, I I conducted the same study uh, using GLDS data. And this is basically showing uh, the that where groundwater table is decreasing, rainfall is increasing, and GLDS is giving the groundwater data. Uh, but uh, I have seen that uh, the grace data is showing more uh, your logical result than uh, your GLDS data. So this is the uh, this is the grace uh, data uh, what is basically showing that one. Then here forty three percent of the area in India, uh, this is showing that uh, total water st uh, storage is decreasing and rainfall is increasing, and and here uh, this is rainfall is decreasing and total water storage is also decreasing. And there are some areas where uh, total water storage is increasing and rainfall is decreasing. And here. Uh, both are increasing and this is basically showing the GLDS uh, data okay now now basically so whatever grace data I have shown you okay so grace data is basically what grace data is giving so it is giving is the total storage okay uh, this is uh, to so total storage that is sum of groundwater soil moisture surface water and snow cover now how to separate this or or basically because i would like to my interest is groundwater okay not the other part so therefore i need a model basically or i need a model to estimate the groundwater fluctuation okay so estimate the groundwater fluctuation so therefore uh, what i can do so there are uh, different models you can use but mainly what i will discuss i will discuss the artificial neural network model nn model and and basically uh, nn model uh, for uh, determining the groundwater fluctuation okay so this is basically showing a a, a human uh, mean suppose a biological neuron and they are actually what i we are doing basically we are i i, I will not discuss in details about uh, nn model uh, but uh, I'm just giving, so this is the neuron here, biological neuron, and we are approximating this neuron uh, using uh, using this. There is a summation and there is a transfer function. And these inputs are coming and it is summing up in the neuron 
and then it is basically transferring to the next neuron okay so this is a neuron and this is the neural network and this is uh, basically these are the inputs to the neuron and these are output to the neuron and basically what we are doing we are uh, we are optimizing uh, optimizing the error between uh, error uh, uh, error function which is derived from the actual output and the derived output and and by the way we are uh, we are optimizing the weights of this particular neuron okay so i will not discuss this thing but what i will discuss here that what is zrnn okay so this is also a neural network but this is uh this is basically what we are doing so we are just using i will also show an excel file because uh, this basically you can also solve using an excel file that i will show you uh, the process of zrnn so we are basically using this is why this is the output uh, output from the zrnn and and this is why e to the power minus di by twice sigma sigma uh, sigma is the uh, smoothening parameter and divided by e to the power minus di uh, uh, this is twice sigma so what we are doing this is the distance between the the basically the input vector that is uh, and and basically uh, the other uh, other data so here x is the input sample so x is the sample so i will show you uh, when i will I, I will show you that uh, that excel file so i will show you what is sample and xi basically a training sample and output of x uh, output of xi is basically yi so here what we are doing we are using the di it's a euclidean distance between x and xi and then this is the activation function we are uh, calculating so this is the activation and and this activation is e to the power minus di by twice sigma square is the activation function and this activation function is the weight for that particular input okay so this is uh, this is the basically uh, you, you are getting this particular input has uh, this is uh, this particular uh, way the value of di signifies uh, how much the training sample can attribute to the output of that test uh, of the test particular test sample okay and di is small means that means the di is small means that means whatever input uh, your sam uh, input uh, your uh, pattern is coming that is similar to one of the sample and then you will get di is small and big means there is a there is a large difference if di is small that means this value returns a relatively large value that means we will give more weightage to that particular pattern because di is small and di square large means that is basically away from that particular pattern and weight of that particular pattern will be less okay and di is zero means that particular pattern itself so we have actually uh, solved uh, we have solved uh, this grounder fluctuation problem uh, using uh, using uh, this GRNN model. Okay, so I will once I finish this uh, presentation, then I will show you the Excel uh, file. So if you're interested, you can also, uh, if you have data, so you can run uh, or you can work, uh, you, you, you can use this uh, similar technique for solving your problem or just for your understanding. So here, here basically, so our idea is that uh, to find out groundwater fluctuation. Okay, now, we can use the grace data but it is also ground or fluctuation is also related to rainfall and uh, temperature if there is a, a high temperature then what will happen the evaporation uh, will increase so therefore if rainfall is more than groundwater fluctuation will have or there will be more storage in the groundwater so therefore what i have done basically so i'm not only using the grace data but I am also using the rainfall data. You can also put some other data, whatever uh, means suppose, which will be a, uh, which will basically influence the groundwater fluctuation so that uh, you can use. So TWS, some of the groundwater, soil water, uh, soil moisture, surface water, and snow, ice water. Uh, this is TWS I'm getting from GRACE data. So for estimation of groundwater fluctuation, we have removed uh, surface water component from the grace anomaly data we can develop a model so basically we have to remove that one and for that actually we are developing a black box model and as i said this black box model can be an nn model can be a regression model can be a uh, your uh, mean suppose uh, the zrnn model or you can use any other 
uh, other other method okay it may be genetic programming also you can use so there are different models you can use as a black uh, this so i am using uh, here grnn model so we did this study for uttarakhand so here uh, this is the uttarakhand state and if you look at so here uh, these these are the foothills of uh, I mean suppose these are foothill areas and here actually you have a couple of or, or sufficient number of groundwater observation well basically so we have groundwater observation uh, well so these observation wells are maintained by central groundwater board so observation well so here you will get the groundwater fluctuation data but but if you look at the hilly area so there is no groundwater uh, your observation well and there is no ground uh, there is no basically groundwater fluctuation data for this part so therefore what we can do if whatever data available if we can develop a uh, a model using grnn or any other technique or using uh, that means by using grace data so i can use that uh, model so for estimating the ground of fluctuation in other parts basically so if i develop here so i can use in other parts so that is the idea where data is not available so i can use this uh, use this uh, data okay so this is the variation of uh, tws uh, uh, tws at different uh, your district of uttarakhand so this is uh, tws variation and and this is the uh, this is basically showing that uh, between agos and variation of tws in entire basically uttarakhand area and you can see basically that there is a uh, decrease in uh, in basically uh, the, the, that the decreasing trend and some literature is also showing basically there are some study conducted uh, by UNDP and so they say that in Uttarakhand uh, many groundwater springs are now disappearing okay so over the time and and grace data is also showing similar result groundwater is depleting in in that uh, area okay so this is the monthly average value so this is in uh, monthly average value in a mm and this is the temperature data I have collected, uh, temperature data uh, of Uttarakhand. Uh, so this is the, and, and different uh, your district. So this is the average values and, and monthly precipitation data uh, from the IMD waves, IMD uh, data, IMD uh, website. So this data is available at uh, gridded level. So this data also collected. So basically for our model, what I need, I need the grace data. So I'm getting this grace data from grace, uh, your website, then rainfall data from IMD and temperature data also you can get from the IMD website. So this is the data. So this is my input. Uh, this is my input to the model and output is the ground or fluctuation data. So for for training the model i also need the ground or fluctuation data and this data i have collected from uh, mean, uh from your central groundwater board and for for those observation well okay so finally i have used this grnn model so this is a particular pattern and this pattern is coming and this is calculating the distance with all the data available data and then i am calculating the the value of activation function and then this is the uh, summation layer here numerator and denominator uh, is is calculating and finally i'm getting the output so here uh, suppose uh, those who are have uh, who are using nn i think you are aware that grnn is a model where we don't need the training uh, set basically so this is uh, not required so uh, but if you are using some other uh, nn techniques so you have to train the model so and and this is basically uh, i have uh, used this uh, model and you can see that correlation between grnn uh, predicted ground of fluctuation and observe uh, this is coming for Dehradun. Uh, it is coming 0.92 that means correlation is very high then Haridar, then nainital then us nagar and some power so you just see here the the basically correlation is very high and even 0.81 is also very good 71 is also uh, you're good if you but uh, this is a relatively poor uh, prediction you can say because 
here actually groundwater data is not available in in Dehradun actually that lot of data is available and because of that uh, prediction is very high uh, here data is not that uh, means uh, that available of uh, available data is uh, is uh, is less basically and because of that prediction is less but once the data is available and after that once the model is uh, ready okay so you just see that correlation uh, value is around 0.924 and and basically uh, this is uh, predicting very nicely okay so and this is showing uh, this is showing basically uh, the nn versus actual groundwater fluctuation so you can see that uh, the green color is the rnn prediction and this is the actual variation and and here you can see that uh, rnn is a uh, is basically and, and could predict the actual groundwater fluctuation so this is for uh, us nagar and and basically this is for nainital then sampabad then haridwar and dehradun okay so in dehradun uh, this prediction is quite good actually you can see that rnn prediction and actual uh, Excel prediction. So this is basically showing the scatter plot, and and here also you just see the this is uh, the uh, R square value is 0 0.6976, 0 0.71, 0 0.67, and uh, this is uh, 0.6. So this is for different uh, your district, and and now. Uh, this is the predicted ground of fluctuation with respect to January. Uh, this is basically uh, that per, uh, percent change in ground water, uh, ground water table of a uh, different uh, different districts of Uttarakhand. And now uh, we have prepared. So once we have prepared the uh, prepared uh, the fluctuation data, so we have uh, we have prepared. Uh, the map basically so where ground water fluxion is positive negative or for different ranges ranges so you can see that some part the fluctuation is uh, is basically negative so these values are showing negative and mainly so uh, and and in some where uh, the fluctuation i think most of the cases this is uh, this is negative fluctuation with different range this is 2005 and you just see this is 2010 and 2015 so if you compare uh with different year then then basically it is it is it is depleting and and here actually uh depleting uh the ground table depletion may be uh, because of land use land cover sense or or maybe uh, your change in rainfall data so this is uh your this is basically pre-monsoon and this is for monsoon monsoon part and this is for uh, sorry, uh, this is pre-monsoon and this is post-monsoon, not pre-monsoon. So this is for pre-monsoon part. Okay. So now I would like to show you uh, the ZRNN model, which basically you can develop uh, using the. I, I I will show you basically using Excel. Okay. But anyway, you can write uh, a, write your code also. So you can develop a code uh, using any language. Uh, but this is a very simple one and you can actually uh, you can actually uh, run a model uh, using in excel also this is also possible okay so now so here i, I have shown you this is the data uh, data given so this is just an example so this is uh, actually uh, not related to groundwater but this is uh, just i would like to explain what is uh, grnn basically so just to explain that one so suppose there are uh, two variable that is x and y is the input to the model and f is the output from the model so there are two values that is x and y uh, this is the input to the model and f is output uh, to uh, output from the model so now this data is available okay so i have here i have generated this data but in case of i have shown you the uh, the model so input data is available and output data is also available uh, and this is basically you can say that uh, that uh, this is the sample available uh, for this one now what i have to do basically so this is a new pattern is coming 
okay so this is the new pattern that is 2 2 basically so 2 2 is the new pattern then how i will i will basically so my uh, means i i am using zrnn and i am trying to predict what is the output of this 2 2 uh, this uh, this particular pattern 2 2 okay so what i am doing here the first is that you calculate the distance okay euclidean distance that is so how we are calculating the distance of this particular pattern with the first pattern so you can say this is my first pattern this is second pattern and i have actually total how much pattern i have i have around 342 pattern so what i'm doing here what i'm doing here in jrnn so from this particular pattern, what is the difference between this pattern and the first pattern? So the distance is 8.35. Then with the second, this is 1.33, then third, 3.35, then fourth, 9.85, 8 uh, uh, 8.21. So like that, and this pattern, you just see the distance is 0.16, okay, with 1.81 and 1.64. Uh, so and 1.79 and 2 this is 0 0.0 so i'm calculating the distance okay so distance of all this sample pattern with this new pattern okay so this distance now what this distance is giving the distance is giving how similar this pattern with the sample data okay so if you look at this particular uh the distance with this particular pattern sir hello yeah hello me. Uh, sir, how to find out this distance D? Means you are okay. saying that we have to take the difference or first yeah, is 4.617 and second is 3.225. Then how we have got this 8.35? No, this is the square basically. That okay. is the Euclidean, Euclidean distance. Yeah. X, X suppose this is 4.6 uh, minus 2 whole square so this is the equation this is a whole square okay okay so yeah. it is with, okay okay, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you sir thank you yeah. so you are calculating the distance okay so now i am getting the distance between this new pattern with the earlier sample pattern okay now what you am doing i am calculating the k k here is this part e to the power e to the power minus this uh, di square divided by twice sigma square so sigma is a smoothening parameter so you can take around 0 0.2 0 0.1 something like that so i have used 0 0.22 here and so i'm calculating the value k so k is this part e to the power e to the power so this part is this part is k here okay so sorry uh, this part is uh, this this part is k okay anyway so i so this part, this part is e to the power minus di square divided by twice sigma square. So this is your k. So then I'm using this particular equation. So what is uh, what is this? This is y i k and divided by uh, divided by any way. So I will calculate uh, this is uh, summation of all k. So what I'm doing here? So y into k. So that means uh, this is uh, this is the d. Uh, this is the uh, this is the d into uh, sorry uh, this y into k y means the output value so here for this particular pattern this is the output okay 31.72 and k i have calculated so i am getting this particular value so you can see that uh, f uh, so i am calculating i am multiplying f4 into uh, this is i4 okay so i am getting i am getting that one so what i am doing here that f so i'm uh, writing f but if you want if there is any confusion i can also write uh, anyway so i have written here uh, x y so or you can write uh, this is uh, x1 and this is uh, x2 and this is y y is the output okay so now basically so you are getting y into k that means 31.72 into 3.5 in, uh, uh, into 10 to the power minus 38 so i am getting 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 36 so yk i am calculating now i am calculating this thing for all the samples all the samples 300 uh, that uh, 342 samples and then summation i have to calculate so i have to calculate summation summation is coming 29. 558 and summation of k the summation of k is coming 3.6 so output is basically so now what is this output output is that 
this 29.558 divided by 3.6 so it is 81 now uh, this is 8 8.18 uh, 8 uh, something so this is the output uh, you can say so i can also see basically where i'm getting the correct output so uh, you can make one pattern two two suppose i'm i'm making two and this is two so you should get eight but you are not getting eight but you are getting eight point one okay so if you have more num more samples so exactly you may get eight value but anyway so this is actually when you are talking about the prediction model in place of eight you are getting uh, a, a, in place in in place of eight you are getting eight point one that is also a very good prediction so that way actually i you can calculate so what will be the value for four and four so or four and two this is coming 20 so you can see four and two, uh this is four and two it should get 20 but you are getting 20.38 that is also a very good prediction so here uh what i'm doing i am just showing you uh with uh with basically excel but i can write a small code uh if you want uh suppose if you're familiar with any coding uh your platform suppose you can use uh means uh, c programming fortran r programming matlab matlab you can use r you can use python you can use so you can write a code and and basically you can uh, you can uh, solve a problem using grnm so the beauty of grnm is that you don't need any training you just see now uh, if you're using other nn model so what you have to do you have to divide your data in three set one is training then uh, your validation and uh, test training testing and validation so that you have to do but here uh, you need not do there is no training basically so you we are using the sample data and this is only one pass so i can i can calculate the uh, mix uh, the value of that particular new pattern so once you have this data is available so jaranin is quite good only thing is that here you need large number of sample okay so if you have sufficient sample uh, then basically so interpolation may not work but sorry uh, extrapolation so if you have the data or uh, within uh, within that if you are trying to predict any uh, any any particular pattern so it can be easily done so you don't need uh, your uh, means uh, need you do not uh, require any training okay so iterative based training because other ann model what you have to do you have to use some optimization model in between is not it for minimizing the error function so but here there is no optimization you can easily even you can work in excel also okay so uh, this is all about my presentation so already it is uh, yeah nine past ten so maybe it's a dinner time and i have also not taken my dinner okay so if you have any question uh, i can take it up yeah thank you very much thank you very much sir uh the format of this training program is such that uh participant have to attend one week offline and the classes will okay. be from seven o'clock to nine nine o'clock and 9 to yes, 9 30 yes. for interaction yes. and discussion and the next yes. week they will come to svnit uh, in offline mode and then there the classes will be from 9 30 to evening 5 30. yes yes uh, yes this, this no, is I, just I, I think information it's... this is the format of atal sir <laughs> okay so the, this format sir. is given from them itself i mean that is the yeah, yes 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 it, 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 it is okay. it is given by aict it is given by oh, aict yeah, to okay. facilitate uh, the faculty members who are working, uh, they are yes, not yes. required to take leave. And after the college hours, they can join one week online and one week yeah. they can come offline. So okay, there are good okay. number of questions, sir, uh, in the chat box. Uh, I'll take one by one. Uh, what is the grid size of Grace data? Oh, this is one degree. No, one, one, one degree one degree by one degree yes. uh, there is a second question by Karan itself does over extracted groundwater has affected hydrological cycle in the area due to increased evaporation volume is there any study on the same no there my i i, I have not studied that one so certainly the question here is that yeah that will certainly uh, change the hydrological cycle because uh, that uh, over exploitation is happening 
and 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 that cycle will change yeah cycle will change but uh, i have not studied what will be the impact on hyd hydrological cycle yeah uh, so mainly next... our uh, yeah basically our focus was uh, means basically where i am working so focus is on groundwater part basically so we are not actually looking at the change in hydrologic uh, cycle so yeah that part i am not aware yeah uh, but the Karan is asking in terms of groundwater only, sir. He's saying, does over exploitation of groundwater affects the hydrological cycle? That's what his question is. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is changing because uh, groundwater, because once groundwater table is depleting, you just see uh, what I have already uh, said about Uttarakhand. So there is another study conducted by uh, some uh, UN agencies. So what they are telling that groundwater uh, that uh, springs are disappearing. Okay, so this is basically affecting springs are vanishing. So certainly this is affecting the uh, your hydrologic cycle. So spring is a part of your hydrological uh, cycle. So water is coming out to the river and from river actually it is going uh, means to the uh, it is evaporating and going to the sky basically. So it is it is affecting the yeah, hydrological cycle question is please pradeep kumar is asking sir how the effect of lulc that is land use land cover changes are incorporated considered while using grace data uh so grace data is not considering land use land cover what grace i i have explained that one so what grace is giving the the gravity anomaly basically what i said that uh, the distance between these two satellite is 220 uh, kilometer okay now, uh, suppose groundwater is disappearing or basically, uh, then what is happening? The mass of that area is reducing, okay, or mass is, mass is basically changing. So as a result, as a result, once mass is changing, so as a result, there will be effect on gravity. And because of gravity, the distance between these two satellites will also change. So it is not considering the land use land cover change. It is basically on the gravity anomaly. So it will give that what is the change in mass? Suppose grace data you are getting every month, okay? The monthly data you will get. Suppose today this is the change and next month also you can say what is the change in anomaly. So if there is some change, so during this particular period, there might be some change in mass. So it is not considering the uh, your uh, that land use land cover change, but it is only considering the gravity value. Uh, so next question is, Sir, uh, how much period you have used to input rain temperature and TWS and target data that is groundwater fluctuation in your model? Yes. Yeah, so this grace data is available from 2000, uh, this is 20, uh, sorry, 2002, 2002 to, uh, so I have used, so this study I conducted in around 2020, so almost 18 years of data I have used. Okay. And uh, how you have used gridded inputs to NN models? Uh, yeah, so this is actually uh, right now what model or what uh, I have shown you. So this is uh, I have done on the basis of uh, this is district level basically. Okay, so this thing because I do not have uh, the ground or fluctuation data at grid level. Okay, so to conduct or to develop the ZRNN model at grid level. So therefore, what I have done, uh, so I have used as a district political boundary, and this district level groundwater data is available in uh, in Central Groundwater Board website. So therefore, this is conducted not on grid level, but it is conducted on political uh, that district level data. And what I have done basically, suppose the uh, grace data is at a grid level, so over this particular district whatever it is so i have uh, used the average value of that one so for that particular district so what i am getting so i am getting a grace anomaly value uh, over the district and i have also groundwater fluctuation for that particular district from the central groundwater board so it is on not on grid level but it is on district level but uh, uh, sir? yeah so uh, sir you have said that uh, you have used for 18 years of data so for each day the grid data has been averaged out and then you have used 18 years of time series data yes yes yes, yes. okay yeah. okay every okay. yeah so this is the monthly uh, we, we are getting monthly data so 18 years into 12 that much data i have received okay uh, sir, sir. is each grace date grace data is freely available 
yes yes it is freely available so anybody can download that one so you can go to just in google you just write uh, download grace data so you will get that one you can so it is in net cdf format so you have to learn little bit about the format uh, so you can use i, I think there are uh, different software to uh, open that file so i have used r programming so here also i can tell actually suppose if you are uh, if you are because uh, this is a large special data so you need uh, some software or some programming uh, programming uh, language to handle this data so you can also try with r r software suppose i am not advocating for matlab because uh, matlab is a not freely available uh, one so you have to purchase matlab uh, so in iit so we have the license but in many institution matlab is not there uh, so but R is a software, this is freely available. And I have seen that it is more powerful. In some cases, uh, it is it is powerful than MATLAB. So you can also use that one. So this data will be on NetCDF format and, and uh, you can you can open it and 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 basically use that one. Uh, what, what is the revisit time of Grace? Oh, one month. Yeah, monthly data. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Dharmesh ji, Jariwala ji, I think you have raised a hand. You want to ask sir, any question? Sir I, sir, I want to ask. Please, please. Yeah. Sir, uh, actually, as you have rightly pointed out, when we are having a satellite data and then we are converting it to the ground level, we have to uh, utilize some of the software or algorithm. So uh, if uh, actually I have read one paper in which the GRACE data they have converted with the Ecolite uh, algorithm. So the similar means if it is located, if it is used for one place, can algorithm that algorithm can be used it for other place or that algorithm will be for a specific uh, particular area? Uh, I I'm uh, it is not clear to me. Uh, algorithm means uh, are you talking about uh, how to use Grace data or yeah, basically actually I have you uh, uh, sir one minute I, I have read one paper in which the Grace data they have converted at the ground level means the uh, map level data that they have converted at the ground level data ground to thing so with the help of the Ecolite algorithm okay okay so this is basically you just see so here uh, here uh, I the Grace what Grace data is giving Grace is giving the anomaly value mm -hmm. and anomaly value is showing the total uh, your uh, this uh, the, the total water storage way. Uh -huh. So okay. now we have to separate it out. So I think they have used that model. So once you have, I mean, suppose using this model, so it's a it's a basically uh, the site specific model because okay. you have to train the model for other area also. Suppose the yeah. the model I have shown this is I have trained for uh, Uttarakhand area, but uh, if it is for some areas, but uh, then I, I have to train. But anyway, so if you are using ZRNN model, so you need not train that one. If you have the data of other area directly, you can use you can that use one. It. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Nitin, I think you have a question. Uh, hello, uh, good evening, sir. My name is Nitin Singh Kachava, PhD research scholar in SVNIT. Sir, uh, mm -hmm. we are using ANN. But, uh, sir, when it comes to reliability, when we are comparing the data of uh, results of ANN with the physics based model, we finally found that physics based models are much more reliable. So, what are your views on this? So, you just see uh, if you have, uh, suppose, physics based model, then don't use ANN. Okay, because you are already getting the accurate result, so don't use uh, ANN. So this is one observation. And so I actually did some study. Suppose uh, I work on salt water intrusion problem. Okay, now basically there, what I have I have done. So I have used the I have simulated the groundwater flow and transport processes. Okay, so I can use the finite difference model or finite element technique uh, for simulating that one. Now, problem here is that, so once you are using, suppose a particular area, you take an area of suppose one kilometer by one kilometer area and depth is suppose 100 meter aquifer. Now, if you are using the physics based model, suppose I have uh, solved the flow and transport uh, that equation using finite difference technique. Now, it takes a lot of time. You just see, you know that one finite difference or finite element if you are using, it will take a lot of time. But question is that when you are using NN model, the time requirement is very less. 
but here uh, there is actually i would like to tell you because uh, you are a student i think you should learn that one so there is a theory called no freelance okay there is a theory called no freelance so what does it mean basically suppose if you are using nn very quickly you will get your result but what you are doing you are compromising with the quality of your solu uh, solution okay Perfect. then then if you are using your other physics based model suppose if in this case i have solved this problem using finite difference or finite element technique i may get more accurate result but what i am losing basically i am losing the time okay yeah. so maybe what you can do i have actually published on paper uh, this is actually based on simulation optimization model so there uh, i have used zandig algorithm for solving the optimization model and there what i have done basically so i have used the both nn model and physics based model okay so in in some uh, way basically and that will actually reduce the time as well as you are also not compromising with the solution yeah. okay thank you very much sir i would like to add one more thing that a year ago during my phd course work i took one nptel course optimization me methods for civil engineering which is prepared by you and i found your nptel uh, uh course very useful in my study currently i am focusing mm -hmm. on the optimization in hydrological modeling so it was a great learning experience from the nptel course and yeah, i feel very lucky sure. and happy to have a live interaction with you and i am sure, also sure. thankful to yadav sir to give me opportunity to have a good interaction with you uh, ayushi i think much. you have a question ayushi last question of today's uh, session yes. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, I wanted to ask that uh, you have used uh, the data on the district level, so it is okay to be averaged out. But if you are working for the larger basin, the the gridded data cannot be directly, I think, averaged out and used in A N N like structures. So no, what basically, can do in that yeah, scenario. Yeah. No, basically, what happened? Na, suppose if we are getting, if you are getting the data on grid level, certainly this is so. In but problem is here that the data is not available. Okay. So data is not available. Certainly, this is uh, not a correct idea to take a political boundary. Though I could publish this paper in a very good journal, mm -hmm. uh, but but problem here is that data is not available. Data is only available. Suppose if you go to uh, that uh, central groundwater board uh, website, so they are only uh, means uh, measuring the groundwater level data, and this data is uh, either point based or basically data will be on district level. Okay, so the map I have shown you. So this actually on a district level map. Uh, this is prepared by, or or this data is given by uh, CW uh, that central ground or board uh, one. So now here what you can do, uh, if you have suppose uh, if I have the data suppose uh, in some areas data is available at point level. So they have the um, Excel measurement and then actually so this point data you can convert it to grid level data in the same. Uh, scale basically that one degree by one degree you can you can then basically I think in the grid level also you can work okay so certainly this is a limitation uh, I feel actually but uh, then I was thinking to solve this problem in a different way but data was not available so I was expecting that there will be a lot of questions from the reviewers uh, but uh, finally I could publish this paper yeah thank you sir uh last question sir as the grace system works on changes in anomaly of gravity as an indicator of groundwater is there any ground based instrument which can also do the same uh no basically so ground based uh, so anyway so there are other basically uh suppose uh geophysical uh your that investigation technique okay so i can use the resistivity analysis and all those things but not like grace actually so grace is uh, yeah it's a different so uh, it is actually to try to monitor the change in water in over the art basically but point based there are other geophysical uh, your method so which will also give you uh, the depth of ground order table or basically if you are measuring at a uh, at, at, at some interval so you will also uh, calculate the ground or fluctuation and it's giving input that traditionally people use diviners uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know actually what is diviners which was based on gravity fluctuations <clears throat> which one uh, pardon 
uh traditionally people use diviners d i v i n e r s karan can you unmute and uh, reply um <clears throat> good evening sir so actually um basically um, uh, earlier in villages like this, somewhere in india people have this kind of concept of they have two rods it's built made of some special metal so uh, they these two rods uh, they kind of uh, resonate wherever there is a change they can these people they can find out where is the ground water available based on the movement of these two rods l, -L shaped rods are there so it's a it's in village oh, yeah. people have been doing these kind of things and they said means when i uh, heard about the grace concept then actually it struck me earlier i also thought it's like a kind of a superstition or pseudo science but then when the grace is based on it so i thought there may be some kind of uh, understanding they might be having you know but uh, this is i'm not aware uh, with this rod basically uh, that is uh, but what is the physics of this one also not clear uh, but uh, as i said that uh, yeah resistivity method suppose i can use to yes. determine the ground water table so there mm -hmm. are other mm -hmm. physical investigation technique for using that mm -hmm. one but this concept is quite uh, different uh, because we are actually trying to see what is the change in gravity at that particular area and this change in gravity is uh, because of the uh, change in mass okay so, and mass change is mainly uh, due to change in ground water uh, level or maybe uh, some uh, other components okay but uh, in anyway, so i'm not uh, actually because uh, what grace is giving it is giving at the resolution of 1 degree but if we have any ground based instrument like resistivity method is there uh, ground penetrating radar resistivity method yes, many methods are there but again ZPR. it's always a better way of um, bringing out a technology on a new paradigm itself so i think yes. it can be a new paradigm working on the gravity and because the kind of accuracy and the kind of flexibility which you are getting you through grace in a satellite so something like ground based instrument can give you at a finer resolution so means we can always think of working on a different paradigm as we are going for resistivity method or um, yes this or maybe a kind yeah, of an integrated approach can could also be thought of giving a more uh, so, accurate uh, yeah actually the concept here is a little bit or or basically uh, different the grace is actually looking uh, not looking at a very finer level okay so mm -hmm. at a particular suppose at a particular point what is happening so uh, you will not be able to find out grace using grace so but uh, i'm taking on the point level basically or at a particular area so it is a regional level suppose the the basically whatever delhi punjab haryana over the entire region because uh, that mass is changing but point level if you want to do you have to go for physical uh, that geophysical investigation so that you have rightly mentioned that uh, yeah resistivity method or zpr ground penetrating radar okay so this this method can be used for point level so you can uh, you you can uh, basically find out the water table though there are some limitations so it's not that the prediction is always correct but the ground water table can be uh, your means uh, estimated but grace concept is quite different then we are on we are looking at uh, the fluctuation over a particular year or over the period basically how so this is basically uh, you can link with the other uh, activities also suppose now you are getting grace because of grace anomaly the water table is depleting then actually you can make uh, mean suppose what is the other senses is there any uh, any political change in political decision or something like that so suppose whatever happening in uh, that uh, northwest india so this is because of the green revolution or 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 that that has been after independent we have started that one so uh, and as a result water table is decreasing so if you want to do that type of study grace data is uh, very good uh, so yeah or otherwise point level study you have to go for geophysical investigation Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a, a really uh, interactive session. I hope all the participants have enjoyed it. And uh, we'll have a, one quick uh, peek with sir. Uh, so all of you, please turn on your camera. Ayushi, I hope you are ready with uh, taking screenshot. So all participants, please turn on your camera. We'll have one quick peek uh, with sir. Is 
done? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zadov. I think it's a nice introduction. So, uh, yeah. Yes, so, I thank you. For yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much to you too. Uh, there were lots of ups and downs. You have some uh, engagements and uh, we have yeah. to creep on your lecture. Uh, however, yes, you have so. accepted it. I was afraid that probably we will miss you. But um, <laughs> your participants are fortunate enough that you agreed and you have delivered uh, a nice lecture. At the same time, interacted nicely with the participants. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night. <clears throat> Good night, participants. And uh, we will join again tomorrow at same time, 7 p.m. Thank you very much.